Ladakh is crying. Sona Mongchuk, who is said to be the inspiration for the character Rancho in Three Idiots, is on a hunger strike until death. Why? What is happening there? Why the people of Ladakh are protesting? And what exactly are their demands? And the demands they place are they really fair and possible to meet? You'll get an answer for this at the end of this video. We all know the Article 370 was abolished in 2019, and the state of Jammu and Kashmir was reorganized into two union territories. The union. Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir and the Union Territory of Ladakh. But what is a Union Territory and how is it different from the state model we have? A Union Territory is a small administrative unit which is directly being ruled by the central government. And there are two types of Union Territories: one with legislation like the Delhi and Puducherry, which has its own assembly and an elected government; another without legislation like the Chandigarh and Lakshadweep, which is not being represented by any elected members, and the rule completely lies in the hands of the central government when the state of jammu and kashmir was reorganized into two union territories jammu and kashmir was made as a union territory with legislation whereas ladakh was made as the union territory without legislation so what's the problem here what is wrong if the central government rules them directly what exactly are people complaining about the people are complaining about the lack of representation when ladakh was a part of jammu and kashmir it was always being ruled by the kashmiri parties and the religion and culture of Ladakh is completely different from the religion and culture of Jammu and Kashmir. Majority of the fun given to them was spent on Jammu and Kashmir while Ladakh was being ignored largely. Before the abolition of Article 370, the Ladakh had lacked the right kind of representation. That's why when Article 370 was abolished, the people of Ladakh celebrated it like anything. They said it is their first Independence Day. Now the same people who are once happy to become a union territory are now protesting against it. Why? Because their problem was the lack of representation in the government and the issue still remains the same. Since they are a union territory without legislature, there are no elected representatives for them, which means a lieutenant governor or a central authority will rule them directly. In four years from 2019, the central authority in Ladakh had signed four MOUs with both public and private sectors to set up projects in Ladakh. But all these are developmental projects. Then what is the issue here? The issue is Ladakh is a very sensitive area. If new industries are set up, the area will be open to the new industrial workers. Approximately 30 to 40,000 people will be employed there. Few of them will be locals for sure, but most of them will be outsiders. This will start altering their demographics and the people of Ladakh are not happy about it. The Himalayas along with all glaciers and river basins are called the water tower of Asia. The glaciers in Ladakh have been melting at an alarming rate. According to a study, glaciers in Hong Kong region have been melted by 6.5 7% between 1990 to 2019. So Ladakh is a cold desert and extremely sensitive to climate change. Let me give you an example. A local person from Ladakh on an average uses around 5 litres of water per day. But we people from the plains use around 150 to 200 litres of water every single day. Just to flush the toilet, we use around 8 to 10 litres of water. If we started moving to Ladakh for a living, imagine how much we would exploit that region. Already the increasing number of tourists have put a huge pressure on Ladakh. The total number of people living in Ladakh is 3 lakh but in 2022 alone 4 lakh 50 thousand people visited Ladakh in the first 8 months of the year. As I said earlier Ladakh is an extremely sensitive area so the people of Ladakh are concerned that these developmental projects may lead to the destruction of Ladakh. But they are not protesting against this particular issue. Their concern is completely different. For many Ladakhis the problem is not the development projects that is being introduced but the fact that they have been kept out of the decision making process they are not saying that they do not want solar energy project or other developmental projects all they want is to have a say in the matter Sonam Wangchuk an engineer and an innovator from Ladakh inspired by the traditional Ladakhi techniques Wangchuk designed a method to create artificial glaciers called ice tubas to compact with the water scarcity he also designed the solar mud buildings which is kind of an energy efficient structure that uses the local materials to keep the building warm. Ladakh is situated at the top of India, so Pakistan and Chinese infiltrations happens very often here. So the Indian Army 
are needed that 24/7, but the climate can get as low as minus 20 degrees. So to keep our Indian soldiers warm, Sonam Wangchuk built a kind of portable and sustainable military tent which can accommodate up to 10 soldiers. So he is not someone who would want to get famous by protesting for anything and everything. He is someone who would want to work and make changes along with the government for the betterment of our country. Now this man has announced that he would be on a hunger strike until his death or until the demands are met. This video quite a few days back now he ended his hunger fast and he announced that the women and the youngsters of Ladakh are going to take it forward. So what are the demands? Number 1 statehood. According to Ladakh, some lieutenant government from some other areas cannot decide what is good for the hills. So they are asking the Indian government to make Ladakh as a full fledged state. Right now Ladakh is a union territory without legislature which means the central government in Delhi has more control over the decision that affect their place. If statehood was given to ladakh they would be able to make their own decisions but there is a catch here ladakh is strategically important because it shares its border with china and pakistan ever heard of kargil even kargil is in ladakh right now the central government has direct control over the security concerns in that region so granting a complete statehood would lead to a more decentralized approach and this may slow down the decision making in security concerns also but the people of ladakh demand if not complete statehood they at least want their union territory to be made as a union territory with legislature so that they can elect their own representative just like delhi puducherry and jammu and kashmir which i think is a very fair demand number 2 schedule 6 protection in the indian constitution schedule 6 is meant to protect tribal communities it allows them to create an autonomous district council and these councils gives them more power to make decisions about their own land villages and districts. Right now, the tribal areas in the states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, and Mizoram are included in the sixth schedule, and now the people of Ladakh are asking to be included in the same because Ladakh has a unique culture and tradition, heavily influenced by Buddhism. And Schedule Six offers special provisions to tribal communities, which allows them to have more control over their own way of life, and that could help the Ladakhis to preserve their culture and language. Moreover, Schedule Six offers a greater control over the land owners. ship so that the ladakhis can prevent the outsiders and corporate companies buying their lands and it's estimated that 79% of the population of ladakh are scheduled tribes so the inclusion in the schedule 6 would ensure that they are treated equally along with the other tribal communities of india number 3 job opportunities the people of ladakh are demanding more job opportunities but not just any kind they are looking for a fast system that creates a better future for ladakhis in their own land like setting up public service commission for ladakh majority of the government job and opportunities in ladakh is being occupied by the outsiders so the people want their own people to work in good positions in their own land number 4 a strong voice in the parliament ladakhis don't have their own representatives in the national parliament they want separate seats for them so that they can address their own concerns to the whole country currently ladakh has only one seat in the lok sabha and now they demand two seats one each for le and kargil which again i think is a very fair demand so what has the government done till now the government set up a panel commission and assured them that they would look for a proper solution so far nine rounds of talks happened between the delhi authorities and the leaders of ladakh and it got no good results if i have to state my personal opinion i'm not sure how much of a good idea it is to give complete statehood to ladakh because ladakh is a very sensitive area in terms of nation security because it shares its border of china and pakistan but i don't really see any harm in making it as a union territory with legislature all they are asking for is the right to elect their own representatives and about the projects like solar plants i think the country's development and economy is very important so we shouldn't be blindly standing against the industrial development but at the same time the development shouldn't be happening at the cost of our natural resources as far as i could understand the people of ladakh are not completely against these developmental projects all they want is to have a say in them the people of ladakh want to be the part of the decision making which i think is a very fair demand